What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday, happy July. Hope you're having a great weekend. I am obviously in the truck once again, trying to exit my busy street where people drive like maniacs because it's Allentown. That's the art district. Oh, good, that guy didn't smash me while I was pulling out. Um, I have the AC on, I hope it's not too loud. Uh, but it's toasty here in Buffalo. We're up, we're up over 80 and uh, yeah, it's gonna be like this for the next couple weeks uh, with not much rain. So it's, it's pretty, but we're gonna need some rain too in some, at some point. Anyway, I wanted to just pop on real quick. I'm on my way to a show. I think I said that already to perform. And um, by the way, I just got these new $7 sunglasses and I really like them. So I should go and get another pair. Okay, we got a panhandler in the street. Okay, don't get hit. He does not look like he's in good shape. There's a lot of adventure around here. Um, I do give money to panhandlers, um, but not when they're stumbling up to my car looking like that. Anyway, um, and plus I'm talking to you. Uh, so yeah, blah, 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 blah. So I had a pretty kooky set of dreams last night. Uh, I thought I would share for whatever it's worth, maybe just pure entertainment. It was, it, it was back in the cosmic category. Um, I may tell it a little circuitously, but the theme was, um, I was observing the story of a young man who seemed to be like a, um, you know, like, kind of like a science kid, you know, like a savvy with tech and maybe a, a young inventor type. And he was working for some kind of corporation and he realized that he had to steal, uh, this secret device um, that he was going to deploy for purposes of helping the planet. And so he goes on this adventure and it kind of looks almost like a big um, te technological canon like out of a comic book movie. Um, it's like a long tube thing with, you know, very futuristic, futuristically mechanical. And he he does manage to steal it, but he has to smuggle it out of the building. So there's a whole game of cloak and dagger going on where he's getting in and out of elevators, but the elevators don't make any sense. Like in a dream where you dream of elevators and they're like screwy because they skip floors or like one elevator is like huge and then it's right next to another elevator which is like big enough for one person. Just, just illogical. Dream logic, which is illogic. Um, you know, it's esoteric, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't always make straight linear sense. So, um, so he's stealing it, he's smuggling it out, and then at some point, he ends up in like what looks like a hockey arena, where there's uh, some kind of rock concert going on, or maybe a sporting event, and he's got this, this piece of equipment, but he's hiding on top of the Jumbotron, which is the, you know, the display that, like when you, if you're in a sports arena and you look up at the display in the center of the arena and it shows the replays and the score and the statistics and stuff. So he was on top of this thing, hiding with the gear. And so I had, and then I had his view. I was looking through his eyes and I was looking out. And as I looked into the arena and all the people were cheering this event and it was kind of neat because it was like having an insider view of of, a, of an experience. Um, and don't ask me why there's a hockey arena connected to this corporation or headquarters. Pardon me, I gotta get a little jacked up for the gig, I'm a little sleepy. So anyway, I'm playing at Creekview, Creekview restaurant tonight, bar and restaurant in Amherst, New York. It was fun last time I went there. They were the crowd was rowdy and fun. So, um, so he's on, so I'm I'm him on top of the jumbotron, but the jumbotron is swinging back and forth like across the arena, but it's stable. But it's weird because then I get these close-up views of like the luxury boxes where the rich people, you know, are, and and then I get a look at like the announcers for the for the event, the the radio announcers and the TV announcers because they're in one of those booths. So like. I'm getting this interesting viewpoint as the Jumbotron is swinging around for some unknown reason, even though it's stable. And um, then, when I look behind me, I realize 
that there's a whole bunch of other people who are smuggling shit out of the building just like I am and they're all hiding on top of the Jumbotron which makes no sense but just go with it so then the Jumbotron swings all the way over to like one of the like an like a like an area of the arena like it, it swings so far over that I can actually like throw as him throw this uh, technological device out of the you know from from the top of the Jumbotron onto the platform and then the next time the Jumbotron swings over I can actually jump onto uh, a solid surface you know away from the platform and get away so I get away and then somehow I'm this guy this young guy with a beard he doesn't look at all like me he's he's tall and lanky and bushy long hair so it's really not me I don't think but um, and uh, and then somehow from there like now we're on a plane and I have to escape again uh, again with this device and and this time the method of escape is literally like diving out the back of like a military plane with the device because there's just no other choice because the because what's going on is here's here's the payoff the world apparently is in some serious peril there is some kind of serious global event going on it seems to be a global calamity of some time I, I, of some kind which is a familiar theme in my dreams unfortunately um, my active imagination plus I did have a couple drinks last night so maybe a couple of drinks could influence a uh, calamity dream that is possible but the world is like kind of on the precipice of disaster it seems like either ecological or nuclear like some kind of major problem and so when I jump out of the plane with the device I think I, I think that I'm gonna die as this guy but I don't instead I end up um, like sort of like landing on these rocks on my feet and I'm waving back at the plane and everything is just peachy like there's no problems um, I mean other than that the world is on fire and literally I can see like like the world is kind of on fire um, so I guess that's a metaphor for our times even if uh, even though I don't believe we're going to be destroyed I really don't so um, so then it's like third person again where I'm watching this young man with the device instead of being him and there are a couple other people along this sort of like um, hill that's filled with rocks and what ends up happening is the young man is able to deploy this piece of technology that he has stolen uh, this device and what happens is this is the part where it gets really buggy and fascinating sorry I need some sunshade the device shoots this beam straight up into the sky like a like a, like a laser cannon it looks like a green laser and it shoots straight up in the sky and the sky goes all goofy like like basically like the whole sky is swirling around with energy and what the device apparently does I got a guy in front of me who's going so slow this is a throughway uh, he's not even from out of state anyway I'm gonna switch lanes so he deploys the device the sky goes all weird what the device does is it is meant to summon cosmic entities and gods yeah do not go into my lane put the turn signal on like going into my lane now that I'm going around them don't you love that um, it's always safe so uh, this this device summons supernatural beings and gods of some kind and basically the sky fills with all these cosmic entities like huge enormous kind of transparent entities and they're all kinds of weird like some of them look like <laughs> monsters some of them look friendly and they're all arriving at the same time like one over the other like like you summoned me you summoned me you summoned me like all of them and the whole sky is just full of these guys oh great that's just something that felt and um as I knew it would um sorry about all the interruptions what can I say I'm sure for time this is the best I can do and so I'm looking up at all these enormous you know these are like I don't know, thousand foot tall type beings, but mostly I can just see the upper torsos. And like I said, they're kind of semi-transparent and they're all like, you summon me, you know, for what purpose? And it's basically to help 
prevent the Earth from being destroyed by this um, event, whatever's going on, this cosmic event. And so that all seems sort of symbolic of like what we're experiencing. We're, we're continuing to experience what the psychics say is a tower moment of just all the old systems crashing down. And it occurred to me that, as I've said many times, my belief is that a lot of the prophecies that were foreseen by various cultures or through religious traditions, uh, Native American traditions, Aztec traditions, and even Christian, Christian traditions, uh, even though I don't believe in organized religion, they all point to this same thing, like this kind of crash, and then what the psychic see is the rebuild the, as we move into a new astrological age, as we literally move into Aquarius, and there's a rising of energy on rebuilding. But first, like, everything has to be, everything somehow crashes first, and it's we're just watching it, because we really are, we're living through it. And so this dream seemed to represent that, and I just thought it was so interesting that all these different beings from all these different belief systems all showed up like when they were summoned by like the cosmic ray that the kid shot into the sky. Now how on earth he knew what this device could do or the origins of the device, I'll, I'll, I have no idea. That, that wasn't touched upon in the dream at all. But he knew that he had to do this and he had to summon these beings and that there was no choice even if he had to like almost like sacrifice himself like when he jumped out of the plane. I don't know if he knew if he would survive, but he knew that he had to accomplish this mission. So um, it does feel like a metaphor for the times we're in. And of course, that's where the dream ended. So I didn't get to see like what followed, like what did these cosmic beings do once they were summoned. Um, and what, you know, what are, what, are, what are we experiencing now? Like when we pray to spirit, when we pray, say even like to Mother Mary or or to some of the other uh, high archangels, you know, do they, do they appear, do, do they come, uh, are they in the sky, much like these beings? I mean, I, I would think that the answer is yes, but it's still interesting to see it represented so much in a dream. And like I said, the volume of entities was so high. I mean, it seemed like it could be hundreds of thousands. So there was a lot at stake, apparently. And so. It, I wish I could draw it or in some way impart the details to you because looking up in the sky and just seeing one being after another like show up and say you summoned me like it was like wow this is really really some crazy big shit so it was pretty neat and that's what I got so I'm gonna leave it there um, there have been some other dreams but nothing quite that interesting or dramatic uh, and nothing that seems to really reflect on where we're at um, and uh, that's about all. And uh, if you're wondering about my cat situation, um, Shay, the new cat, has come along great. All his fur is like reinvigorated, like he shed all of his uh, shaggy, bad fur that he had grown outside. And now his coat is just like shiny and short and he looks great. And now my only problem is he's so lovey-dovey with me and follows me everywhere that now my my cat Gabe, who is 16, um, he's having a hard time getting used to Shay being so like, um, you know, dom not dominant, but just like taking so much attention. And I'm trying to trying to give Gabe as Gabe as much love and reassurance as I can, um, but it's tricky. So I've had to. He he would usually come to bed every night, um, as Shay does now, in my air conditioned bedroom, which is the only bedroom only room in the house that has AC. But now Gabe's been sometimes avoiding it because he doesn't want to get into it with Shay. So the last bunch of nights I've been going and getting him before I go to bed and making him come up at least for a while when he takes off after. So if anybody has any advice for uh, how to integrate um, a very young cat with a pretty old cat, um, I'll take it. Though, of course, at one time Gabe was the new cat when I had a previous cat. And, um, you know... They, they too had to adjust and they did so uh, that's about it from my end and I'm getting off the throughway I'm almost at my destination hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend I've got a lot of gigs for the rest of the month which I'm looking forward to and then I hope uh, also to get in more work on my book I'm now in the I'm working on the fourth section out of four the first three sections are in draft form and I'm pretty happy about that and so uh, we'll see how far 
I can get into the fourth section this summer before my work gets busy again uh, in the fall, my day-to-day my -day job. Okay, that's all from Buffalo. Be well. Take care. See you soon.